a happy holiday live on the Wendy Williams Show. Okay, let's get started. It's time for Hot You know it. Love you more, thank you for showing up. <laughs> Hi Santa. I, I, yes, I see you, I see you. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> I love my people. Okay, top story, Amorosa. I will give you my opinion after I give you what we know. All right. So she's out of a job. According to the White House, Amorosa has, resi has resigned from her role as, what did you, what'd you all say? <laughs> as Director of Communications for the Office of Public, Public Liaison. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but uh, she resigned to pursue other opportunities, she says. Okay. But according to several sources, she was forcibly escorted out of the White House. She demanded to see the president. <laughs> Apparently, she tried to get into the private uh, uh, area of the White House, you know, where they sleep, and ran, ran into Ivanka, and Ivanka was like, no, 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 I have no words for you. John Kelly is not the one who was there when Omarosa uh, got this job. But Kelly is in there right now and apparently cleaning house. So he allegedly told Secret Service to remove her from the building. Well, she went on Good Morning America and spoke with Michael Strahan, and this is what she said. Go ahead. Were you escorted off? No, I was not. And in fact, Secret Service put out a statement because I think that they were bothered with the assertion that they were involved with any type of escorting or shutting me down, that sort of thing. And I think you should take the word of the U.S. Secret Service over someone who has a personal vendetta to bring me down. But when I have a chance to tell my story, Michael, quite a story to tell. As the only African-American woman in this White House, as a senior staff and assistant to the president, I have seen things that have made me uncomfortable, that have upset me, that have affected me deeply and emotionally, that has affected my community and my people. And when I can tell my story, it is a profound story that I know the world will want to hear. I will still reserve my opinion until we get to Robin Roberts. Hit it. Mm -hmm. so she said she has a story to tell, and I'm sure she'll be selling that story. We'll see. Yeah, she will. I'm fully sure. Robin said, bye, Felicia. <laughs> I can't. And then, you know, Angela Rye, she's Common's girlfriend. Well, she gave her opinion. Uh, take a look. Go ahead, Angela, I want to hear you, and then I do want to talk about the black vote in, in Alabama. That's I so, want to so talk about today. the black vote, too, but Brooke, I'm going to yes, do what you can't do and what April and Simone are too good of people to do, and that's just going to be petty for a minute. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Angela. Oh, Bye, Angela. girl. Oh, Bye. Angela. We did it already on the podcast, April, but bye, honey. You have never represented the community. You are skin folk. We don't own you like Zora. Goodbye, good riddance. Goodbye. <laughs> 
do Angela, this. Angela, you know I have much love for you, but you know what? I don't delight in anyone's demise. That, I'm oh not delighting her demise. I wish her the best, but I... So, if you've been watching The Wendy Show long enough, then you know my first encounter with Amorosa was in our first season, where she tried to play me, but we're still here and she doesn't have a job. And if you continue to watch, then you know we made up. She became uh, some sort of pastor or something and brought her uh, ex-fiance or her late fiance, uh, Michael Clark Duncan here. You know, he passed away. But so we made up. And now here's my opinion. My opinion is Omarosa was fired. I don't believe she quit. <laughs> number one. Uh, number two, I don't believe that she was escorted out. I do believe that because of the reputation that she has created for herself, it's easy to say anything negative about Omarosa and people believe it. You see, around here at Wendy, everybody's delighting in this, except for two people, me and one other person. I'm not delighting in it. I do think she got fired though, but you know, I think that because of the role she plays as the villain, as the uh, villain, it's easy to say she was escorted out. Angry black woman, she's throwing shoes. She was doing this, she was doing that. Well, apparently she wants to move on to more politics. She's looking at something I think in Nigeria or something like that. Um, well, Amorosa, good luck. And <laughs> just saying. So huh. there's a new sexual assault uh, allegation on three men. The first one, Russell Simmons, we already talked about his first uh, allegation, so it wasn't shocking that more came out. These, uh, these other ones are a singer. We don't know who the singer is. A music journalist and a former Def Jam executive, that was his record label, who all claimed that they were violently raped by Russell. Oh. Yeah, they used the V word. Oh. Mm -hmm. The Def Jam music executive apparently settled with Russell years ago for $30,000. This is back in 1997. Um, Russell's not saying anything. He's, other than vehemently denying all the allegations. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is what I love about TV better than radio. You know, radio, you have to say everything. TV, all you have to do is look at the camera. <laughs> and Tavis Smart. Stop, stop. Tavis Smiley, I am so disappointed. I can't believe you're caught up in this mess. I just did the promo last week. Tavis, you were supposed to be a guest. You know, you know, coming back, all new shows in January. Tavis Smiley's gonna be here. Tavis, don't cancel. You'll come, we'll shine a spotlight on you. I'll wear a judge's robe. <laughs> So his talk show has been suspended after multiple uh, misconduct allegations. PBS, they hired a firm who conducted an investigation. It's come to my attention that Tavis had no idea that investigation was being done behind his back, right in his own show, his own building. PBS claims that Tavis engaged in sexual relationships with multiple subordinates. So what does that mean? He, Dated an intern? I don't understand what that means. Well, he's, he's single and I don't, uh, Tavis, damn it, man. You know what, Tavis? Here's how I was voting for you, but I was gonna save it until you got here. I was going to rally for you to take the place or be in the running to take one of uh, the, the Matt Lauer chair. That's how much I dig your scene. I was. He's smart, he's a journalist, people like him. 
Well, Tavis uh, did a Facebook uh, video claiming that the investigation is unfair. Take a look. That I have never groped, inappropriately exposed myself, or coerced any colleague in the workplace ever in my 30-year career. It is clear that this has gone too far, and I, for one, intend to fight back. PBS overreacted, and they launched a sloppy investigation. Well, Tavis, until we find out more, you're still one of them to us. One of them. In the name of your mother, who he loves to buy her St. John's knits. I remember this from years ago. I've known, I've known Tavis for years. <sighs> Look at my co-host. They're sad, they don't even know what to do. They're not even clapping. And you know, we're the clap, we're the clap crowd. <laughs> okay, the third uh, one is Harvey Weinstein. And this is big, because he's already out there. But now Selma Hayek is speaking out. And can I say, I believe every one of her allegations? Yeah. Yeah. Every one of them. Okay, she's claiming that he threatened to kill her and forced her to film a sex scene, full frontal nudity, with another woman on, on her baby, which was Frida. Now, she not just starred in it, but she was part of the production, you know, behind the scenes, like this is her baby. She went to the family to meet Frida's family and she really investigated. She wanted this to be done right. He also told her the unibrow is unsexy. Clip that off. Uh -oh. How do you clip a unibrow off? That's Frida. Anyway, um, Selma, uh, you know, is married. Uh, I don't know whether she was married at that time, but she says that she had to uh, get medicated and had a nervous breakdown because of allegedly the treatment that she's alleging that Harvey did to her. Well, she went on and she's married to a billionaire. What does she need to lie to us for? What does she need, what, what does she need to lie to us for, right? <laughs> Harvey responded overnight and vehemently denies all of Selma's um, allegations. In the meantime, she's got her daughter Valentina, uh, her man owns Gucci, Balenciaga, Yves Saint Laurent, Puma, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So, you know, in my opinion, this is a woman that does not need to lie or speak out about anything because she's got a charmed life. She also happens to be friend to the show, but still, a charmed life. Eh, I believe you, Selma. Good thing about wearing a wig is when, when one hair gets gnarly, you just take it out and throw it on the ground. <laughs> okay, so Nick Cannon is, you know, in my opinion, he and Mariah will get back together in some way, shape, or form. Give it five years, give it seven years. But they will get back together. Whether they marry or not, I don't know. But they will get back together in the name of, we're back together. He, he just released a video um, for his song called Dream Girl. Reportedly, it's about Mariah. Okay, Jeremiah's on the song, as well as, um, who'd I say? Oh, Quavo. Mm -hmm. He's the Beyonce of the Migos. <laughs> anyway, so there's a dog version of Nick with a turban and a dog version of Mariah. There's Mariah. Uh-huh. And the lyrics uh, basically say, I ain't over my ex yet. Still think about her. Paparazzi asked me why I left her. Well, you know what? I believe he's over her for now because he's having a good time and she's still in a, it seems like kind of a mess, you know what I mean? But then we all grow up. There's a, there's a certain time in life, you know, where you grow up and you realize what you had and they got the twins. By the way, I still do believe that he does drive-bys. Oh, police. Let me tell you something. 
When Nick Cannon was here, I no longer refer to him as Doofy. Oh. Nick, no, he's got a certain je ne sais quoi. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. He might wear a turban and he might uh, have goofy ways, but uh, he is a charming, charming, charming man. Hi, Nick. Tomorrow begins our three week vacation here at Wendy. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Our Christmas party, we'll all go, go home, we'll be hung over, we have off for three weeks, you'll see reruns, excuse me, encore performances, darling. <laughs> um, do you have a most memorable Christmas gift? I do. I mean, I've gotten a lot of good stuff. My parents really did provide for us when we were young. I, uh, just everything, soup to nuts, everything. Piles of gifts the best. But my most memorable, memorable gift was a pair of Calvin Klein cranberry colored crushed velvet cigarette jeans. Uh-huh, pockets in the back, pockets in the front, little pocket up here, size 14. Well, now here I go, along with my sister. All right, so, you know, we're shaking the boxes, you know, the night before, my parents are going out to socialize, as usual. So they're out, and me and my sister are ripping through the stuff ever so gently. Because my mom is a rapper. She doesn't just box. Like, she's very, she's such a Martha Stewart. I can't even deal. <laughs> so, like, you know, I unwrapped this box. It had the jeans. I tried them on. They didn't fit. So I did the usual thing that, I do, that you do with jeans. You know how you squat down to stretch them out? You know, you wiggle down and stretch them out. A little something. And this is before a spandex was available and everything. And honey, I split those jeans all the way up. And um, folded them back, put them in the box, made sure, made sure that all I did on oh, Christmas morning, because it was always a big event, you know, we all open our gifts together. All right, you know, my brother, it's your turn. My sister, it's your turn. Mommy, it's your turn. Mommy, it's your turn. Daddy, it's your turn. Wendy, it's your turn, like that. I returned them to the, to the uh, store, though, uh, for a size 16. <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> George and Amal Clooney. So, you know, they don't fly private, I guess, a lot. So they were fl flying uh, public, and in, they were in the first class, but they have their six-month-old twins, and they gave out to everyone, have you heard this story? In the first class, the noise canceling headphones uh, in the first class before the flight took off with an apology note uh, saying, you know, apologizing ahead of time. The headphones also were stamped with George is, uh, George's uh, tequila label, uh, Cosmigos, on them. I gotta tell you something. First, thanks for the headphones, <laughs> but I don't wear headphones. Second, you better clamp those kids up. <laughs> this, this is a long flight. <laughs> this is a long flight. I don't want headphones. I hope you brought lots of toys and tricks and snacks and movies. You and that wife of yours, you better get it together. Right now. Or I'll use the headphones as a weapon. On another George note, this is like a dream for everybody, I think. He gave a million dollars to his 14 best friends. This is, yeah, this is back in 2013. All right, so they all come to the house and he gives them all a suitcase. And in the suitcase, there were uh, $20 bills equaling a million dollars. Including his best friend, Randy Gerber, who's married to Cindy Crawford, who, Crawford, who's also wealthy in his own right. He doesn't need a million dollars, but he gave his to charity, but he wanted to treat them all equally. He says, here you go, everybody, all 14 of you, you've been good to me, here's a million bucks. Wow. And, and by the way, and, and by the way, I will take care of the taxes. 
I don't know one person that I would give a million dollars to. <laughs> Not, 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 not one. I mean, I'd be generous, you know, including you, Reg. Well, that's my best friend, but Reg is married to Nick. Why am I gonna, you know, like Nick, take care of your house? If I give her a million bucks, she'll share with him. That's not the intent, so I can't. Mommy and daddy, not gonna give you a million bucks. But if you ask me for stuff, I'll do it. You know I do. That's very generous though. Who has 14 friends for a million bucks? <laughs> or maybe they hold the key to his deepest, darkest secrets. <laughs> John Stamos, who's 54, and his fiance, Caitlin, they announced, uh, she's 31, they're having a baby. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> I never met him, but I, I imagine him being a tiny little man. You know, like five feet two, 100 pounds. You know, yeah, tiny. Anyway, um, he thought he was too old to have a baby. But no, you're not. This will be their first baby, he, he, and his first as well. You know, he's never had a baby outside or anything like that. So congratulations, and good luck. <laughs> We've got more great show for you. Up next from RuPaul's Drag Race. Carson Kressley is here.